Hello and welcome to the first of two tutorials on random access memory inside Minecraft, more commonly known as RAM. Uh, this is a request, well, kind of request from a friend of mine, so uh, I will hopefully explain and clear up any problems with uh, RAM inside Minecraft. Um, in uh, well, I'll first explain what RAM is. RAM is used to tempor temporarily store data um, while the CPU is running. Um, in a CPU, you normally have, uh, well, now that we've moved on a bit in, uh, in terms of Minecraft computers, you normally have dual read RAM, um, the ALU, and an output register, and that's what makes up the CPU. So once the ALU can compute an answer, once that's done, it, you can save it into RAM, where you can read it later on and perform some other function on it. So basically it's just a, uh, a way of storing data. Uh, one second, I'll just turn off the rain. The rain. Okay, um, but before we uh, get onto dual read RAM, which is more complicated, I'm just going to start with the standard single read RAM. Um, there's a, there's a colour code, so the way I build RAM. And this is uh, like this. Red is for the data input, so where you input your numbers. That's generally on the top. Yellow is when you're writing it to memory, so that's when you're saving it, so writing or saving it. The grey is signal transportation, where um, it's really not like not used in here, um, but it's used in this one where you've got to take the data from the uh, from the the memory cell all the way down to the read two, and uh, that's what this is. I could have probably just called that other because it's uh, it's not really used, but yeah, that's what I do it. Yeah, that's why I use grey for. Um, green is reading one. Um, so as in dual read RAM, there are two read outputs. Um, green is read one, and blue is read two, which, as you can see in here, there isn't blue on here because this is just single read, just as read one. And the magenta is the transistor block, which is just the block pushed by pistons. So as you can see, where piston is there, press down. I will just uh, clear this and then give an explanation on how this works. Okay then. In the next video, I'll uh, do dual read RAM, but now for single read. Um, so then, as like I said, red denotes the uh, the user input. So I'll start by inputting. Uh, I'll input the number ten, I think, uh, which is eight and two. So. 2 and 8. And now I'll uh, explain how this how this save function works, or the write function. Um, it uses something called a BUD, or a block update detector. And the way this works is, if a, uh, if a piston is powered by a, a block um, at a diagonal adjacent, or one above, like it is here, it will not extend until this block is updated and the way this block could be updated is um, by updating a block around it by so by um, like uh, placing a block would update it uh, destroying a block would update it powering redstone would update it uh, and uh, powering a piston next to it would update it so as you can see if I use this one for example this piston here is directly below this which is powered but nothing's happened However, if we press the right button now, as you can see, um, where is it? Is it this one that I showed you? Yeah, it's down this one. This is now extended, and it will stay extended even if we uh, remove this. And that is what a bud is. It's a form of me it's a form of a uh, remembering data, I guess. It's a glitch, I suppose, but uh, it's something Mojang, uh, Mojang, whatever, uh, have said they're probably not going to patch as it would break all of this in everyone's computers inside Minecraft but um, so yeah that's basically like a crash course in buds um, so I'll just show that again so uh, as you can see I wrote this and now the only ones which are down are the ones which have uh, have power going over the top of them like this so now these two are down now we need to uh, move on to the next uh, next part which is uh, the data transportation, I guess. Um, all of these 
uh, pistons here. As you can see, the it's all identical. They're all stacked the same. But all of these are powered. Oops. Yeah, straight back up. All of these are powered due to these torches. These torches could be placed anywhere just as long as they uh, provide power down here. So all of these are all powered, except the ones which have now got the block down. So that's unpowered, and that's unpowered. So uh, and the second place where all of these uh, all of these pistons are powered is on this reed line. So as you can see, this one is powering this one here. Uh, the torch is powering that one. Torch is powering that one, and that one, and so on and so on. So they're all powered in two places, except this one here. And obviously this one here. So now, if we unpower this line by turning off these torches, since it's not powered here and it's now not powered by the line either, this piston here and this piston here will retract, allowing the power to come through here and through here, and that's reading the data. So now, if I, if I uh, turn that back on, no data will be outputted. And when I say read, it's just uh, when you say read, it's just showing it as the output, I guess. So showing whatever stored in memory as the output, that's what reading is. So if I read this now, um, obviously 10 will output, and if I don't, nothing will output. So that is how one cell of RAM works. But a very nifty thing about, uh, about proper RAM and this sort of RAM is there are different addresses you can save to. So I just saved, um, so as you can see, I only use this button. So this is saved one, uh, sorry, saved ten to this address. So it's just using this part here. If I put another number, Say, uh, say the number. Let's have a look. Uh, how long? It doesn't really matter, does it? I'll do the number five. Uh, so four and one. So now I've inputted the number five. I can now save this to uh, to address two. So address one still holds the number ten, and address two still now holds the number five. So if we wanted to read ten, we'd uh, read the first address. And if we wanted to read five, we'd read the second address. So that is uh, that is pretty much all there is to know about um, about Minecraft RAM. Um, and hmm, what could I say now? Oh yeah, I'm just going to explain how this uh, this read line works. Um, this is a very compact RAM design. It's two by two by fourteen, so two wide, two long, and fourteen high. Meaning that you can't have this line going next to the block, uh, next to the piston, otherwise it'd update two pistons. So the way um, the way this has been built, been designed, um, this these are uh, this line here going across, and uh, so all of the read lines only update this piston here, and this piston here will then update the bud piston. And since we use uh, glowstone here this block will not update the bud piston so I, uh, I'll show you how this works so um, if we didn't use that glowstone this this line here would update both blocks but as uh, as we are using glowstone it will just update the blocks when uh, when these pistons have extended so like so this line extends all of these pistons along this line which will update these and uh, the same thing here, so updated and these two drop down because we've still got five going through on the data. Um, so that's how uh, that's how the write line works. I've already explained how the read line works I guess. Uh, I think that's about it then. Oh yeah, one last thing to say is I do not claim this uh, claim this design as my own. This here is my own. I think this is a very compact dual read RAM design, but this single read RAM design um, was taught to me by uh, Titanic Nut. I think I'll leave a, his YouTube channel in the description. He's another, uh, he's a very good redstoner. 
one of the admins on the server I build on. Did I say redstone server or redstone build? Ah, oh, well, whatever I said, he's a good redstone builder on our server. Um, so yeah, I hope this has been a uh, reasonably informative video. Please like, comment, and subscribe.